Welcome back to Titanium Man Garage. And uh, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe and uh, hit the bell if you want notifications. So today I'm breaking out of my shell. Uh, I normally do uh, 500s and 400 two strokes. Today I'm going to be working on a 700. So this video is going to be about um, how to fix your four wheel drive if it's not working. Now with these 700s, there's a couple different things that can go wrong. Um, the first one, they're notorious for the uh, the shifter shifting hard when you push on the brake pedal and you shift it. Um, these will get a little sloppy, a little worn out. There's a spring inside of here. Uh, sometimes that rusts and gets corroded in there. Um, so that's going to put some wear and tear on your shift indicator. It's electronic. 90% of the time that uh, that'll cure your problem. But uh, you know, they're like a hundred bucks, and if that's not your issue, then you get a hundred dollar paperweight sitting around. So the second issue with uh, the 4x4 not working, let me turn the key on. This is actually a buddy of mine, um, doing him a favor and I'm helping him out. So uh, he's having issues with it shifting hard and when he turns on the key, nothing lights up. Huh? Nothing, I got nothing. So if you catch that quick enough, that's usually a ground issue. And uh, if you follow your wires up here, a lot of times it's uh, these wires will turn green on you and uh, your uh, speedo won't light up. Um, if you waited too long, there's a good chance that the ground issue um, could have shorted out the speedometer. So if the speedometer doesn't work, it doesn't know what gear to shift into, and it also will not allow the four-wheel drive to work. So I'm gonna try a couple uh, things first. Sometimes you can take that uh, shift indicator off and uh, move it with your finger. You can't uh, get the four-wheel drive to engage. That, uh, that could tell me that uh, that's the issue with the shift indicator, unless you have um, a voltmeter the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out, inspect them, make sure there's not uh, green corrosion in there. Uh, maybe I can get that speedo to work uh, if I'm lucky. The guy didn't ride it too much, so maybe I'll get lucky I'll get that thing to work. Now if that doesn't work, there's a shortcut under the hood that I'm going to show you. It'll bypass all your headaches and get rid of the reverse override button. So it's win-win, either way you do this. So I got the wires disconnected, they're looking pretty clean. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm uh, taking a little piece of sandpaper, try to get in here, and uh, I'm just kind of rubbing this back and forth, to clean the terminals off. And I'm gonna grab a little uh, can of electric uh, parts cleaner. Kind of clean that out. Make sure you let that dry before you plug it back in, because uh, that could be a safety hazard. So I'll blow that all out with a little uh, air. These are looking pretty clean. I'm going to put a little dielectric grease on it and plug them back in. There's one other uh, quick trick I can try is uh, try to put an extra ground wire on that speedo to get it to, to work. Uh, if that doesn't work, this thing's probably shot. And if that doesn't work, I'll show you my little trick on how to get that four-wheel drive uh, shift indicator light lit up and uh, your four-wheel drive working. So I checked the wires coming up here, they're good. I decided to take the uh, speedo cover off and disconnect the speedometer and find out what's going on. I uh, popped the cover. This thing is pretty grimy and dirty. Uh, probably needs a good cleaning. Probably all the uh, connectors need to be recleaned, but uh, as I was looking, I noticed some wear right here. And I was rubbing up against here, and I saw broken wear. Check that out. And that goes right up to that plug where the speedometer goes. So, uh, little tip, if you got the same issue going on, see if you can get that speedometer working first. Uh, you might have, uh, like I said, you might have like what I got going on here, wires rubbed, broke, 
if you can get that speedometer working, the four wheel drive will work. So I'm gonna try that first and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Got all my wires soldered and taped and uh, guess what? <laughs> this is pretty awesome. I got power. I turn the key and go flip the four by four switch and look at that, four wheel drive. I don't see it lighting up here, but I do see it lighting up here. So I'm gonna jack the back end up in the air and check this bad boy out, see if we got four wheel drive. So I got the back tires off the ground with the uh, rolling jack and only the front tires are on the ground now. So uh, if you do this, just be careful. You don't wanna damage anything. I just gotta inch it forward to make sure the front wheels are, are uh, pulling the ATV. That's pretty freaking sweet. Fix the speedometer and the four-wheel drive works. So now I'm going to show you the, uh, the quick tip. Um, if your speedo is shot, there's a way to bypass everything and get rid of that reverse override button, which I forgot to push when I wasn't going in reverse before. So if your speedo isn't working, you want to look for your 4x4 uh, connection. This goes down to the, uh, the differential. Try to move that out of the way. It's got a white plug on it. And there is a brown wire and a gray wire. So brown is always ground on uh, the four wheel drive. Gray is usually uh, hot. So you take a little wire, put an end on it so you can uh, ground it somewhere. And you put this end in with this ground wire. All right, so I took this and I uh, hooked it up to my uh, my lead, my new ground, and it's going to the brown. And what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to bolt it to a ground on the frame somewhere. Uh, you can use a pre-existing screw or there's a, a couple holes down here. Uh, you could just put a screw in there and it'll be grounded down. Now, me personally, I wouldn't use this type of connector because water will get in there and then you might have the same issue uh, in a couple years. I'd probably try to solder it, um, do it the right way, keep it clean, and uh, wrap it up on a watertight seal. So if you do it this way, you will bypass the override switch. So when you're in reverse, you won't have to worry about that. Your four-wheel drive will work. If you flip your switch, it'll go to two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. It's basically what you're just doing is you're turning on and off the power of the four wheel drive. So all out of work. And that's my little quick tip of the day. Now I had seen this done on Polaris 500s. Uh, the 500s have uh, two of these. And you just uh, loop them together, ground both together and uh, ground it to the frame. And that fixed your four wheel drive. I learned something new today and I just wanted to share it with you guys. I didn't know the, uh, the 700s were like that. I just always thought if the speedo shot, your four-wheel drive isn't going to work. I was pretty stoked I got the speedometer to work by finding a, a worn-out wire. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to reroute that uh, wiring harness so it doesn't rub on the handlebars anymore. Get this all buttoned up, put it all back together the right way, and hit the like if you like the video. Subscribe if you're a new viewer. I've got uh, plenty of Polaris repairs. And like always, till next time.